Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, Peterisms, where I tell stories of my life, and just little things that I have learned as I have grown into the person that I am today. <laughs> and the person that I am today is 28 years and one day, don't forget that one day, sober. And I had such a great uh, sobriety birthday yesterday, and I just relaxed and um, uh, hung out with my good Judy Tiny Jean last night. We had so much fun, and I ate too much at the Olive Garden, and then we did some shopping, and we went to the Meyer and we were walking around the Meyer last night and I said to her, I said, you know, I said, this is like one of my favorite things ever. Just, you know, being with my best friend and walking around and having a fountain pop and stuff like that. And, you know, I think that's the thing um, that it's like the... It's really hard to give people the message of recovery and sobriety. You know, like it's always like, well, you're, you know, you need to save your life or you need to do this or whatever. But it's like those very simple moments, you know, and I talked about that in my video that I did on my Peter Mon channel yesterday. It's like those very simple, small moments of just like, you know, hugging my dog on the bed or, you know, like my husband laughing or, you know, hanging out with Tanya or, you know, just even sitting by myself, you know, like outside in the cold and just like being part of the universe. It's just like those small moments that make me feel very, very grateful for my life and for my health and for my sobriety. And, um, yeah, I just, I felt just overfilled with joy yesterday. So anyway, and I want to thank all of you for continuing to watch this channel. I love this channel so much. And in fact, I was just looking through the Melanie Beatty meditations for like today and yesterday because I thought, well, I missed yesterday. Uh, and so maybe I'll read what the meditations were for my sobriety birthday. And they're like all good. <laughs> they're all good. So I'm going to go in and actually, because I haven't read from Melody Beatty's Journey to the Heart in a while, I'm going to start with the meditation from yesterday. Um, and it is called and December 17th, don't complicate things. The simple, clear answer for life situations can be easily found in the heart. Don't limit its wisdom to just one or two areas. Let it guide you through all of your life. Through all your, of your life. Are you struggling with finances? Feeling overwhelmed by taxes? Not certain what to do to help someone you love? Do you have a problem with a friend? Has a business relationship gotten sticky? Maybe hopelessly adversarial? Are you at war with the person you love? Problems with children? Problems with parents? A landlord who just won't get the job done? All of these areas and more can be brought to your heart. Do you need to find a new hobby? Are you stuck on a project? Do you need an idea, some creative inspiration? Do you need a new place to live or a way to fix your current home? Take it all back to your heart. Calm your mind, let go, get quiet, you don't have to know the plan. Just put out the question, then listen to your inner voice. It will guide you through any maze you've been lost in. Don't complicate things or try to figure it all out. The answer is simple. Look in your heart. And I know that some of those things that it said in there, like problems with children, problems with you know parents, problems with a loved one, trying to help a loved one, not having a place to stay, you know, problems with you know landlords, things like that. I know that those are big issues in the, the grand scheme of things, but I think sometimes what we do, and I can only speak of my experience, I think sometimes what I do is I like start spinning in my head, right? And I start scripting out, like, well, I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna say that, and I need to do this, and I need to do that, and I need to do that, right? That never serves me well. Like, I always look back on that, and I'm like, God, you should've just shut your mouth, right? It's always better for me to kind of just sit, not react, you know, and really think about, like put it out there in the universe, you know, to my higher power or just the universe, whatever. Like, I don't really know what to do with the situation. And there's a saying in recovery that, you know, it's like pray on it. And, I, and I'm not, a, I'm a believer in action. I'm not a believer that you just pray on it and then the things just solve themselves. I don't believe on that, believe in that. But I mean, I do believe in prayer, and I do believe that prayer can help a lot. But I don't believe you just pray on something that just solves everything. I think that action is a huge part of most of things, right? But I do think that this idea of praying on something or thinking about it deeply, you know, we talk about meditation, and meditation is really the act of thinking about something deeply. I think about just, like, thinking about something deeply, putting it out there into the universe, and then letting it go for a while, watching a funny TV show, saying, you know what, I'm not going to think about this anymore tonight. I'm going to think about it for two minutes and think, okay, this week, I need to deal with this. I, okay, I'm going to put it out there in the universe. The answer will come to me. 
I have to tell you guys, like 90% of the time, when I don't sit there and mull over something and stress out over something and let it simmer inside of my head, the answer comes to me. And usually the answer is much simpler than I ever would have, you know, given merit to. I mean, usually I'm like, oh, it's going to be this complicated. I'm going to have to deal with this and I'm going to have to deal with that and whatever, you know. It was interesting because the other day, like, I had to, like, talk to somebody and I was, like, really, like, dreading this phone call and I was like, oh my god, I don't want to make this phone call because it's going to go this way and I was like, oh, and they're going to say this and then I'm going to have to say this and then they're going to get their feelings hurt and then blah, 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 blah and all this kind of stuff, right? And I was, like, all worried about it and I, like, made the phone call and it's not somebody that I, like, talk to, like, on a regular basis. I, like, made the phone call and it went the complete opposite. It was, like, so simple. They could care less and I just was, like... Well, that was pretty easy. You know what I mean? And like, I complicated it. And I, and I find that when my life is complicated, it's typically because I complicated it. You know, I'm the one that's the source of my own misery to some degree. So it's about like just stopping that and not being part of that, you know, and, and letting life be simple, letting life be about the simplicity and enjoying that simplicity. So that was a good meditation. Okay, let's get into the next one. So this is from yesterday, and this is from The Language of Letting Go. December 17th, nurturing ourselves. Many of us have been so deprived of nurturing that we think it's silly or self-indulgent. Nurturing is neither silly nor self-indulgent. It's how we show love for ourselves. That's what we're striving for in recovery, a loving relationship with ourselves that works, so we can have loving relationships with others that work. When we hurt, we ask ourselves what we need to help us feel better. When we feel alone, we reach out to someone safe. Without feeling that we are a burden, we allow that, we allow that person to be there for us. We rest when we're tired, eat when we're hungry, have fun or relax when our spirits need a lift. Nurturing means giving ourselves gifts. A trip to the beauty salon or barber shop, a massage, a book, a new jacket, or a new suit or dress. It means a long hot bath to forget about our problems in the world for a few moments when that would feel good. We learn to be gentle with ourselves and to open up to the nurturing that others have to offer us. As part of nurturing ourselves, we allow ourselves to give and receive positive touch. Touch that feels appropriate to us. Touch that is safe. We reject touch that doesn't feel good or safe and is not positive. We learn to give ourselves what we need in a gentle, loving, compassionate way. We do this with the understanding it will not make us lazy, spoiled, self-centered, or narcissistic. Nurtured people are effective in their work and in their relationships. We will learn to feel loved by ourselves so much that we can truly love others and let them love us. Today, I will nurture myself. I will also be open to the nurturing that I can give to others and receive from them. Let me tell you when I realized that I wasn't being nurturing to myself and taking care of myself. It was years and years ago and you know, I would have a friend and I would say, oh, well, what did you do today? And they'd say, oh, you know, I took the afternoon off and I went and got a massage. And my response for that wasn't happiness for them. It was bitterness. Or I would say to another friend of mine, like, oh, what did you do last night? Like you didn't return my call. And they'd say, you know what? I just really wasn't in the space to be talking on the phone. And so I took a long bath. I did a face mask, you know, and I watched this movie that I've been dying to see and I made some popcorn. And my response to that wouldn't be happiness for them. My response would be bitterness. Or, you know, I would talk to somebody and I would say, oh, so what are you doing? And they'd say, I just went and got a gallon of my favorite ice cream. And um, I'm sitting here and I'm eating it and I'm watching Netflix and I'm just all cozed up on the bed, you know, whatever. And I wouldn't be happy for them. I'd be jealous because I was constantly worried about my weight or worried about, you know, what's the next thing that I'm going to eat, you know? And I couldn't be happy for other people because everything that they were doing to take care of themselves was a reflection of what I wasn't doing to take care of myself. And it, it took me a long time to realize that. It took me a long time to realize that I wasn't very nurturing of myself. I didn't do things to make myself happy, you know? I didn't do things to, like, I mean, I take a lot of naps, you know? And I don't make excuses for it. Um, and I enjoy myself and, you know, and I watch the shows that I want to watch and I relax and, you know, and I think, like, 
I think it's important. I think another thing that's really important with all of that is setting limits and boundaries with people. And I think this is a big part of nurturing ourselves that we don't talk about, right? That it's important to set limits and boundaries for ourselves and say, you know, I'm not going to allow myself to be treated this way. I'm not going to allow myself to be talked to this way, you know, or whatever. And um, about setting limits and boundaries. And that may be mean that people exit your life, you know, that I, I said this in a video the other day. It's like when you set limits and boundaries, all of a sudden people think that you're the bitch, right? That's okay. That's okay if they think that. Um, anybody that thinks because you're, and I'm not saying that you have to rudely set limits and boundaries, but to say to somebody like, okay, you've canceled on me four times in the last two weeks. Like, what's going on? Like, that's a fair question. <laughs> you know what I mean? When somebody is constantly talking down to you to say like, I don't appreciate you talking down to me. It hurts my feelings and it doesn't make me feel very good. Like that's not you being a bitch. That's you asking fair questions or you setting fair boundaries, right? That's taking care of ourselves. You have one life on this planet. You deserve to take care of yourself. And this is the other thing. I'm not big on martyrdom. I talk a lot about this in my videos. I'm not big on victimization and I'm not big on martyrdom, right? And the reason why is do it. If it if, do it, victimize yourself all you want if it makes you feel good. I just don't think it gets us anywhere. I just don't think that playing the victim really gets us anywhere in life. I don't think that we learn anything from it. I don't think that we grow any, you know, from it. I don't think that it helps us get any further where we want to get. And I don't think it helps people understand where we are, right? So <laughs> the opposite of that is to take care of yourself. You know, when people are like, oh, well, my mom lives with us and, you know, I have five kids that I have to get to school every single day. And I, you know, we're, I, I understand life's tough. I get it, right? Like, I understand that. And you have a right to your feelings. And I'm sorry that life is hard for you. And I wish that there was something that I, and I mean this sincerely. I wish that there was something that I could do to make your life easier. But take care of yourself, okay? Because this this constant script of let me tell you how tough my life is, the majority of the people that you're saying it to, here's a secret, okay? And I'm not saying this to be cruel. They don't care. They really don't, you know? So it, it, you're just saying it, I think, for yourself. But what would be better for you to say those things, for you to feel validated, or for you to actually take care of yourself? Because if you can't take care, care of yourself... You know, it's like the coin that I got when I got out of treatment. You must first be a value to yourself before you can be a value to somebody else. How can you help your other people if you can't help yourself first? How can you help take care? People are like, well, I don't have time to do this. You don't have time to take a, a five minute shower or a 10 minute bath or do some eye peels while you're getting ready in the morning and cooking, you know, bacon for everybody in the kitchen. You don't have that long. You know, you don't have lo that long to just maybe put some lavender on your wrists before you fall asleep at night or, you know what I mean? Like, I, I think most of us can take five minutes out of the day, you know, to just like have some us time and you deserve that. And that's the other thing is to realize that you deserve that. And the more you start taking care of yourself, the more time you'll have, you know, and, and the more time you'll give to yourself and the more you'll realize that you're deserving of that. Because you are, you know, you're absolutely deserving of that. And, um, you know, I don't know. It's like I, I, I understand where people are coming from when I, when I, you know, hear that and people will say like, well, you have no idea like how tough it is for me and I do all this and whatever. And I'm like, I... I get it. Like, I feel for you. Like, your life sounds very tough. Like, I really, like, I appreciate how difficult it is for you to manage all that you have going on, right? But is complaining helping that? Or would it be better for you to figure out, what can I do with all of this to make myself feel better? Well, there's nothing that I can do. I, I still would have to do, well, I don't know. Maybe there's something that you can do that would be taking care of yourself, you know? Maybe there's something, make a list of 20 things that you could do. Maybe all of them are unrealistic, you know? And I think the other thing is asking for help. This is like a huge thing. And, um, you know, I, I have several friends of mine that refuse to ask for help. And I used to be somebody that I used to micromanage everything, you know, like, um, I had to be on top of everything and have, you know, do everything and whatever. I don't do that. Like if I have something that I can ask for help in today, I'm like, I'll, I'll ask for help in it. Right. And the other thing is I appreciate when people ask me for help, you know, when I see friends of mine like spinning like out of control and like they're so frustrated, I'm like, what can I do to help? Nothing. You can, there's nothing I can do. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, there isn't one thing that I can do to help. Like 
ask me to help you. Let me be of service to you. Let me be of help to you, right? Um, I mean, I think that's one of the greatest gifts that we can give. It doesn't cost anything, and it, it you know, it's, it's time, you know, just costs a little bit of time and love to help somebody out. Um, so it's interesting to me, you know, um, but I think that that's people's fear of like giving up some kind of control over things, you know, I don't need to have that much control over things anymore. I just want to, you know, enjoy life and, um, and I'll admit I need help. I need help today, you know? So anyway, let me know what you think about those two meditations that were from yesterday. And, um, I hope that you guys are having a, a wonderful weekend and a fantastic beginning to uh your new new week starting the week of christmas starting tomorrow and i love you guys and i'll see you uh tomorrow bye